In this video, we'll learn how to add some site elements and entourage to our scene. Alright, so now that we have our view set up and everything's named, I'm going to go ahead and switch this to a more consistent color. And let's talk about some of the things we can do to this view. Um, so first of all, we made went ahead and worked a little bit ahead, and we made some adjustments to this uh, topo surface. I want to show you how a side element we can add that we can use to add concrete, paving, sidewalks, and things like that. So what we'll do is we'll actually split the surface of this topo surface we have and create concrete. And once we get that done, I'll show you how we can add some trees and people with ease. So let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to my site view whenever I'm placing any of my site elements. And when I scroll in here, I'm going to go ahead and hide some of these while I'm working. I really don't need to see my survey or my project base point. So if you recall, all we really need to do is go to our visibility graphics and quickly turn those off. So those are probably going to be our model categories. I'm going to say site. And again, we're going to turn off that project base point and that survey point. I'm going to say apply and OK. So that'll kind of clear things up for us, make this space a little less cluttered. So now what I want to do is I want to use these lines that we kind of adopted earlier in our design process, which kind of give us something to work with. And I want to use these as a guide for the paving for our building. So we're going to use these. Not only are we going to use this form and these lines as a way to place our trees, but I also want to use it for boundaries. So I'm going to use the same shape for paving around our building. So all I really need to do is basically split the surface of this topography that we created. So just hover over any edge here, and I'm going to do a tab select until I see that I've selected my surface, and I'm going to go ahead and left click it. And this is what we're going to be working with here. I'm going to, just so you can see exactly what we're, what we're doing here. So we're basically going to come back here. We have this entire surface. We'll use these lines as a guide to split the surface essentially into two, this outer ring and then what's going on on the inside that will later change to another material. All right, so to get it done, I'm just going to go to my massing and site. And underneath our modify site tool, I'm just going to click on split face. Now, you could use subregion, but with subregion, it's really just going to define the area within the topo surface. To actually really divide that surface, you're going to want to split it so you have two different topo surfaces. So for that reason, we're going to go with the split surface over the subregion. So let's go ahead and left click on that. And the first thing I need to do, if you pay attention down here, we recall our status bar, it says select a surface to split. And we want to split this guy right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select it, do a quick left click. And now all I need to do is sketch in the form. Now I can use my lines, I can use you know pretty much whatever I want to do, but I'm going to use my pick lines because it's easy. And I'm going to apply an offset because I'm going to use these green lines that are original position here. Those are going to help me place my trees. And I'm going to want my paving to back up off the trees because I don't want my trees growing out of concrete. So for that reason, I'm going to apply a 10 foot offset. Make sure I'm picking lines and I'm just going to use these as a guide. Again, I'm just picking these lines up. Go ahead and delete that. That just let me know that my line was too short. If you run into that, just go ahead and reactivate that command. Go ahead and apply your offset all over again, and we're back in business. So I'm going to go ahead and oops, continue on with these lines, making sure I select the correct area here. So then we'll use, in our modify panel, we'll use our trim to make sure we have a closed loop system. No intersections or no overlapping lines. Everything needs to be nice and closed, just like we have. So now what we have here is the green line you can barely see in here, we're going to use to as a guide to plant our trees. Anything within this pink line area here is going to be concrete. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the green check mark and take a look what happens. Boom. We have two different so topo surfaces. One that's already highlighted, and then two, the original one right out here. And I'll do a tab select to kind of get it here. So you see it? Now all we need to do is come in here and divide this out really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. In my properties, I'm going to go ahead and change its material from grass. Let's go ahead and change that to a concrete lightweight. You can either type it in up here or we can just scroll in. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I use my rendered appearance because we're going to use it for a render and we want it to look like this in a render, right? So once that's done, I'm going to say apply, OK. I'm going to say OK here and now when I click out here in my area, we have two different surfaces. Pretty cool. All right, so now we need to go ahead and plant some trees 
and place some people into our scene. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to my level one view really quick. And let's take a look at what we have. So I remember my camera, I have a camera shooting out this way and a camera shooting this way. So if I were to highlight one of these, let's say we go with the southeast perspective here. Remember, we highlight the view within a 3D view, then go back to floor plan view, then our camera is exposed. I can see that I'm going to need to make sure that I place my entourage within this triangle. So that means my trees are going to need to come along this way, some along this way. And when I place my people, I want to make sure I place them all in here. They're all going to be included within the scope of this. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm going to go to Site. I'm going to hit Escape a couple of times to clear out that camera. And let's go ahead and go to uh, Massing and Sight. And really all we need to do at this point is make sure we go to the Model Site, model site Panel and click on uh, bringing in one of these uh, site components. Now what happens here is we automatically get these trees here by default in our properties. But, I mean, we can easily start dropping these in, but if I go to my type selector, take a look at all these trees we have to choose from. We have quite a bit to work with. So you go ahead and take your pick. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this deciduous. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant my trees somewhere along these areas. And I'm going to use my lines snapping to midpoints if I can and endpoints where I can. And again, my midpoint is always going to be that represented by that triangle. And my endpoint will always be represented by a square. All right, so once I get these in, and I'm going to put some in the background as well, because you remember that view depth or that far clip we talked about, this is where that type of detail comes in handy. So we want things that are kind of beyond the model as well, giving it a sense of realism, and it adds a nice detail. So that's pretty cool, right? We can drop in these trees, and these th trees, I'm going to jump to a 3D view, are 3D trees as well. Now, they look like cardboard trees in this view, and if I switch to a more consistent color, they do as well, and this helps with performance. So I have all these trees in here, but if I were to switch to, let's say, a more realistic view, take a look at what these trees look like now. Much more realistic, but the functionality of Revit gets a little more choppy when you're working in that realistic view. So if you ever want to see what your trees look like before you drop them in, you can place them in and easily switch to a realistic view. But I highly recommend if you're trying to move around your model, switch to a consistent colors. That way your functionality isn't so choppy, even though, you, and that's mainly because you get these low poly uh, trees here that look more like paper cut trees as opposed to the high resolution, realistic looking trees in a realistic view. All right, so let's add some people to this as well. So we'll go back again to site. And we'll probably want to get rid of some of these trees. We don't want to block the camera. We've got to keep that in mind as well. And we don't want to hide a lot of our architectural elements. And again, a lot of this will probably be determined if you have a landscape team that's already working on your trees um, or has already laid out the design of your landscape. So I'm going to go back in here and replant a couple more trees here. All right. So now what we can do is grab our people. So now for people, I'm going to go back to site component. But this time, I'm not going to go with anything out of here. I'm actually going to go to my mode, and I'm going to go to load family. Now what we're looking for is called entourage. So we'll come over here, and I'm going to click on entourage. And this is where I can find all kinds of site elements. So you can see here I have vehicles. I have people, male and female. So let's do a little bit of both. Let's drop some ladies into our, our project here. And I'm going to place some right around here. I'm going to place a few different people in here. So we have some variety. Maybe we're congregating over here. Now the great thing about this is I can select any one of my people. I can go to the drop down and take a look at this. We have options. So right now I have Cynthia. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change this Cynthia to Kathy. I'm going to change this Cynthia in my type selector to a Florence. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and copy another person by going in my Modify panel and copying. Bring a fourth one in here. And I'm going to change this person in my Type Selector to Union. Alright, so I'm going to go back out here and let's grab some more people. 
make this a little more interesting. Oh, we'll go back to site component, load family. Again, we're going to go to entourage. This time we'll grab a male or a guy here. And let's say these guys are about to head into class or just out here kind of blocking the doorway, knowing they need to be inside. All right, so we have four of them. So I'm going to select. That's Dwayne. I can go to the drop down. And we have options. So I'm going to switch him to Alex. I'm going to keep that Dwayne as Dwayne. In my type selector, I'm going to switch to J. And let's go on and get our buddy Laurent up in here too. All right. Perfect. So now we've added some concrete side components, some people, as well as some trees. So now I'm going to jump to that 3D view we created. Oh, let's look at this one on the southeast perspective. And take a look at that. We've got trees. We have people. We're starting to bring this to life. So if I were to switch this to a more realistic view, get a better representation of what it's going to look like um, with people and, and trees in there. So you see how that looks? Pretty nice, right? And the people come in pretty clearly. So we get our sense of scale. We get our green, our nature, as well as the actual architecture uh, in, our, in our area here. So now that we went ahead and kind of set up the scene, you can feel free to go in and add some more trees where you like. I might add a couple more. So what we want to talk about in the next clip is how we can set up the rendering options. So we'll actually go into the rendering scene. We'll set up the time of day. Um, we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the settings we can use before we hit that render button. And we'll create us ourselves a really nice image for our design. So I'll meet you in the next clip.